Hello everybody, it's the Farm Sim Guy here, hope you're all doing well. We are in Italy. And there's a bit of a story behind this. Uh, we've thrown in the towel with our farm in the UK. It was becoming a bit of a stressful chore on Purbeck Valley. If you remember, very early on in uh, my career, I ran a rather long series on Purbeck Valley. But uh, farming in the UK has become a bit of a challenge, so we decided to throw in the towel, um, sell what we had, and uh, try something new. So we're over in Italy. I've got just less than £500,000 to my name, um, and I've spoke to my cousin Giovanni, who's lent his little Piaggio scooter, um, and he's also given me the names of some people in the local town who might be able to help me invest my money. So we're just going to jump on the bike here, and we're going to head into town and see what they can do to help us. We're typically... When you arrive in Italy, you expect sunshine and lovely weather. Feels very, very British at the moment. But we are going to head over here. Um, there is a lovely town up on the hill uh, where Giovanni told us to go. So we are going to go and check that out. Hopefully, something that we can uh, spend our money on. So we're just heading up the hill to the town now. It's a beautiful little town. I just wish it wasn't raining, but uh, hopefully things will improve. So we're just going to pull up into the town here. I think park the bike somewhere safe. And we will head into the real estate place, which I do believe is just down here. So we're in the real estate place now and he's showing some map of the area. There are three main farms in the area. There is the large farm here, which goes for a, a, a princely two million pounds. There's a second farm here valued at 410,000, but with no land at all. Um, and then if I was looked to, if I was looking to buy fields, that's going to really put me pretty tight on money straight away. So the third farm, and probably the one I'm going to plump for, is farm number three. And that is Farm Azura, and it is um, one big field, uh, a chicken coop, and uh, will give us enough money left to look at potentially some other land. Now, I do have to have a shop around and see what I can find, because I don't want to overdo it. Um, too much too soon will be risky but what we also need to do is look at what we need from a, a machinery perspective as well uh, now there is actually fields 12 and 13 there as well which look pretty good so I'm tempted to just I'm just going to bite the bullet I mean it's land the nice thing about land is um, I can sell it if things get really really tough I hope it doesn't get to that point but um, I think more land the better to be honest, to start with. So with that in mind, we shall go and look at our new farmland. So here we are, I do believe on the left, just round this corner, is the entrance to our farm. And we will go and see what we've just spent our money on. Quite excited to see a nice entrance anyway. So down here we go, we've got ourselves a lovely little farmhouse. So, some fertiliser in there, that is handy. And if we just head around here, we've got a couple of bags of seed as well, that's nice to see. Um, this is where we pour in our grain once we've harvested it, a little storage under the ground there. And uh, some very rusty old sheds to keep some machinery in. Uh, there's a auger for refilling, we've got another shed down here as well, which is great. Um, so a nice storage space there. We've got a fantastic chicken coop here, so I definitely think we're going to invest in some chickens. They could uh, they could be quite handy for a little bit of money, although we don't have any wheat yet, so we'd need to buy some feed for them. So we'll just need to be mindful of that. And then this is our big field. So our field closest to the farm. We do have two other fields, which we'll go and have a look in, in a little while. But we only have 137,000 left, so we are going to have to be quite selective about what we buy now uh, I think we'll just buy the necessary for what we need I think we'll make up any extra cash uh, with a few contracts in the meantime but uh, for now I think we better head down to the shop and uh, see what they've got there that they can uh, part company with so here we are down at the shop um, 
there is not much going on at the moment. It looks pretty quiet, um, but uh, I did find one of the salespeople um, who uh, had a good chat with me, and he does have some nice equipment that he can sell. Not the most expensive, but it will be stuff that will work for the farm and help us get started at least. I wish this rain would stop. Anyway, um, looking at the fields we purchased, um, the first thing we need to do is kind of get that that ground turned and ready for planting. So I'm looking at a planter or a cedar and some um, some means of turning the field under. So jumping in the store, there's some nice old Fiat's in here. Uh, I'm really taken by the 1355 as well. I'm interested in potentially buying that's 35,000, which is quite a lot. Um, if we go into medium tractors, uh, there is another track tractor in here as well. Um, this New Holland, um, again, probably just a little bit outside of my price range, although the horsepower difference could make it worthwhile. Um, so we'll potentially buy one of those to start with because I'm quite interested in both of those. On the plow front, we have got every variant of plow you could ever think of, from nice big wide four meter ones down to small 2.5 meter ones. What I am interested in is this Valentini Ripper. It only needs 90 horsepower to run, but it'll get some really good subsoiling done, and it's only 15,000, so absolutely considering that. Um, anyway, we're going to have a chat with the dealer now. We're going to come up and see if we can strike a deal with him, and we will get this stuff delivered to the farm. So we'll see you back at the farm, and you'll see what we've bought. Okay, we have spent some money. We've got this lovely old Fiat. Um, there it is. Costs a little bit more. Uh, we've got the wider tracks on it. And we've got some weights on the front. We've got the Valentini Ripper. Um, that was a, a no-brainer, to be honest. A lovely piece of kit. And we also got this Gasparato um, Cedar. And it will also fertilize as well. Um, so we will start to utilize that as well. So that's kind of what we need to get ourselves started and just get some of these fields planted. Because to be honest, 75,000 left, um, we're, we're going to need to make some money pretty quick. Like I said, we can look at contracts to uh, help shore up things. But um, it's early spring and this rain isn't going to abate for a little while. So um, I think we'll just jump in and get this first field sorted, shall we? Okay, we are going to start up here. I'll leave the headlands till last, um, as you should do, really. Let's work out where we need to go here. Um, I'm going to drive this by hand as well, just for now, just for a starter. So we will crack on with this, and we will report back shortly. So when your new tractor packs up after three quarters of a field, it's not great. It's not great. I've already had a word with the shop. I am livid. Just trying to get a start on this new farm. Start again for myself and, you know, I just need some luck to go my way. So um, they've been very apologetic. Fair play to them. Um, they're going to come and get this uh, and remove it from the field for me. And uh, they're going to drop off an alternative for me. If I like it, I can keep it. They'll give me a discount rate, so uh, it's not going to cost me anything. But this is uh, this is not the start I wanted at all. Um, but let's hope our, our luck goes up from here. 
Now we're back up and running again, just finishing over the edge of this field. We've got this Fiat Agri 180 running for us, and it is a beauty. Um, cost the same as the other one, so uh, we've just done a straight swap with the dealership. So hopefully that is the start of our luck changing, because um, yeah, we've not had the best starts yet, have we? What with the rain and uh, now breaking down machinery, uh, hopefully we can uh, change things for the better. Now we've got a few tiny little elements left in this field to pick up which we'll go and grab now and then we'll go and have a look at our other two fields. Okay there's the first field plowed and looking very good even if I do say so myself. Now what we're going to do we're just going to quickly head back to the farm because one of the neighbours is heading down. We've done a bit of deal with him uh, to get some chickens delivered and uh, so we'll wait for him to arrive and then we will uh, Go and look at the other two fields. Well, the neighbour's just been, and he has delivered to us 258 chickens. And also, some chicken food here, um, which will keep us going until we have some of our own. Pretty sensibly priced, though. I think it was about £1,500 for the chickens, uh, and about the same for the each bag of chicken feed. So, um... Not a bad little investment. Now what we do need is a little wheel loader to move this stuff around the farm. Also uh, for things like our seed bags and our fertilizer. So I think a little another investment is on the cards and that is uh, a little uh, loader. And we're going to use, but just because we're tight on money, our little skid steer that we made famous on Bulls Gap. Okay, we've got the bag lifter on. Um, we will just lift these up and drop them into the feed points. So we're just loading up the chickens now. Let's just have a look in the seasons menu to see how much. So they've taken a thousand litres, which is one bag. It will give them a bit more as well. Let's top them right up. So there we go. They're not taking any more yet. So what I'll do is I'll leave that one there because we know it's half done. And uh, I'm assuming that the eggs come out of the other side, so uh, I'll get a couple of egg pallets and set them up waiting. Okay, that's all the playing around we had to do with animals. We are now going to go and plough our other fields. Now it's a bit of a trek to where our other fields are. They're not ideally close, but I was basically planning ahead a little bit. I basically decided to buy the fields that were close to uh, Farm 2, uh, which has got a pig pen at it. Because really I'm thinking ahead that I would like to potentially invest in that second farm as soon as I can. So we just need to cross the road here. Make sure I don't get hit by any cars. Field 13. And behind it, over there, field 12. These are both ours. So we'll get in these, and we'll get these ploughed as quickly as we can. second field done the third field behind there I'm gonna leave just for now uh, one thing I am keen to do as well is to put some lime in the ground so uh, we've asked the shop as well to uh, deliver us a little spreader we don't have one yet but uh, I've ordered one and it should be there at the farm by the time we get back so we'll just head back now and 
just for a bit of variety we will load that up it's not going to take us long to, to uh, lime both of these fields and actually I think we'll lime the third one as well and then plow that one under just for a bit of difference and then we're going to start planting as well okay here we are back at the farm and yes there we go there's the little spreader that we were looking for okay let's jump into the field here and get this limed and then we can get it planted I am going to do this one by hand, just because I know the the spread on this is rather wide, so it literally should be a couple of laps of the field and we should be fine. As the train coasts past the field we've just got this little bit here to do and we'll come back and grab that small edge and we are done on the first field and we've got a fair bit of lime left certainly enough to do the other two fields I think uh, we'll, we'll top up just for safety purposes really so we don't have to drive back halfway through but we'll go and get the other two fields done as well and then it will be time to fill up the cedar Okay, we're here at our other two fields. I'm gonna not go into the plowed one first. We've already done that, but I think I'll take you around here and show you our third field. Uh, like I said, there's the other farm, and that's where I'd ideally like to purchase next if we can uh, if we can make it work in the in the not too distant future. But for now, we'll just use the track to get into this field here. Like I said, it's quite small. Um, it's what we could afford at the moment, and to be honest, we should get a good, uh, good bit of crop off both of these. So, worth buying for the money they were ha they were on for. It was worth buying. Okay, let's get this done. much time at all uh, and also didn't take much lime either um, but it does mean we should be able to get the other field done relatively quickly as well so we'll get that done um, we'll probably not bother putting on a time lapse because um, you've seen enough liming now so we'll see you when it's done And there we go, we're all done, all fields prepped and ready for a little bit of seeding. So um, we'll push on with that now, we'll go and get the seeder prepped, loaded up, and we will see you back in field one. Okay, we are going to use wheat to start with, um, because we need it really for, for food for the chickens. Um, we'll get a little bit more adventurous in the other fields, but certainly... This will, this will help us out in terms of feed for the chickens to start with, and anything over and above that we can hopefully sell. But uh, it's been a busy day here. Um, it's taken us a little bit of time to get started, what with machinery issues and uh, just really getting used to being in a new country and uh, doing things differently. So uh, we're going to leave this to run, I think, um, and we will come back and we will see you in the next episode. 
So for now, from me, the Farm Sim Guy, thank you so much for watching. I uh, hope you enjoy this series and you're looking forward to seeing where we can take this. But for now, from Italy, I will say goodbye and I will see you all again very soon. Bye for now.